Hello and welcome to my illustrious home office. I wanted to uh, take a little bit of time and we're going to try and make a game today, or at least, you know, the start of a game. Um, it's going to be super simple. I'm going to be using the program Game Salad. Um, it should be interesting. I haven't used Game Salad in a while. Uh, I did build an indie game with it a while back and uh, hopefully it all works out. Now, you're going to see everything. It's going to be one of those things from beginning to end. I'm going to try and record in basically like hour increments uh, and see what happens and make each episode. But, um, we're going to start off. It's going to be super, super simple. Uh, it's not going to be, you know, anything crazy complicated. Uh, when I say super simple, I mean super simple. Uh, just because, I, can, you know, that way I can get it done. So, now, um, I'm going to be probably making a lot of mistakes. <laughs> um, uh, I, you know, I, I'm not a very good programmer or anything like that. And actually, you don't really need programming for uh, for game style, to be honest. But, um, yeah, so we're going to go and get started. I've already got a pretty good idea of what I want to build. Um, it's going to be just basically... Uh, sort of like a peg-based game, uh, sort of like Peggle, something like that. Another caveat is usually I take this and I drag it over to my uh, my other screen, but I can't do that because then you guys wouldn't see it. So anyway, let's go and get started. If you have questions, put them in the comments. Hopefully I'll be able to uh, answer them. Um, let's make our ball first. And move. If you move in a direction... 270. Here. Actually, actually, I don't want to use move. I want to use accelerate. Accelerate towards. Um, I could just tell it to go down. I don't want to do that because I want it to kind of launch. or like out of a cannon uh, looking thing. Hey, my Roomba's getting ready to go. I'm going to go turn that off. I'll be right back. In the back. All right, cool. Um, so now, all right, where were we? Oh, yeah, we're making a ball. Um, okay, so in order for it to know where to, to actually shoot itself, I need to track the position of either a touch or a mouse. Uh, for this instance, I'm actually going to use a mouse because I actually kind of want to test out Game Salad to see if there's any way to sort of uh, put it in. I can't remember what they said. Like a, Basically, I want to try and find a way to make it look or act as an EXE so you can put it out on Steam. Um, this is more just a test project for me kind of thing. But anyway... Here's our game attributes, our scene attributes, and our actor attributes. Um, since... Hmm. Let's use... Again, there's probably better ways to do all of this. I'm just going to do the way I'm most comfortable with. I'm going to make a... Yeah, let's do that. I'm going to make a game attribute. So let's say mouse x... Mouse... Why? Okay. And actually, I'm going to make a little, uh, basically, a casino GM. It's going to do all the work uh, that... It's going to do all the work that I, I want something to do in the background uh, that isn't an actor. Because, I mean, the ball is going to be deleted and stuff like that, so I wouldn't want to put any, like, super important stuff on the ball. Um, of course, then it would be deleted and it would not, it would stop doing that, or it would do it every time it's instantiated or every time it's spawned. So, okay. CGM, what do I want you to do? I want you to constrain an attribute. What attribute would you like me to constrain? I want you to constrain the mouse game, mouse X. Um, let's look at our list of devices. Mouse position X. There we go. Now, constraint is basically is constantly updating. It's not just like a change. If I use change attribute, it would just do it when it's called on, and that's it. A constraint attribute is basically always running. It's say always keep this attribute to this thing. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I didn't need to copy. I could have just made a new one, but it's okay. Game. Mouse Y. To dump that. Devices. Mouse position Y. There we go. I also like to have like a little debug text actor that I'll delete later. Debug text. And I'll drag him into the scene and you will display text. It says just dis displays hello world by default, kind of like you know the programmers that what's the first thing you get taught to, <laughs> to to use string variables on, but I'm not gonna do that here. I apologize for the sniffing. Just Got a little bit of a cold, just this time of year. Just does it to me. Okay. 
and we're actually going to make a copy of you. And what I'm doing is, is I, since I'm using Windows, uh, I hold down Alt key and then click and drag, and then it will create a copy. Now, uh, one thing you'll definitely, definitely, definitely want to do is if you ever want to change the uh, actor instance, like say, if you want to change the you know variables on the actor itself, like give it HP or something like that, which we'll end up doing. Uh, one thing that's tricky is you want to click on it up here in this window and then change it. Because if you click on it over here, see a little thing that says instance, that means you'll only be changing that one instance of it. And uh, the reason that's kind of frustrating, it can cause a lot of, of uh, grief, is because if I try to change the instance of the behavior of one of these, so like I can click on these and change, like say these two are the same thing. If I were to change this, it would change it for both of them. Um, but if I were to in, come over here and I wanted to change just the one, there's a big, big lock. Like, it's pretty obvious that, hey, this thing is only going to change it for this one thing. You have to unlock it in order to do it. Um, and, you know, that's that's a pretty big thing. Uh, now, but it doesn't do it over here. It's just this tiny little word that says instance. I, it's, it's really, really easy to miss. So I recommend that you... Uh, that, yeah, you, you learned that lesson now because I have spent literally, I want to say it was about 20 hours trying to figure out why some of my uh, scripting wouldn't work. Um, and it's because I was clicking on the actor in the window and then changing the actor attributes. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's super frustrating. I wish they would fix it, but, you know, whatever. We'll have to live with it for now. Anyway, sorry, that was very long and drawn out. All right, so debug text, I want you to say mouse X, and I am going to unlock this one. I want you to say, you know, I could do mouse X plus mouse, uh, mouse Y and the other one, but I don't really care about that. It's, they're only going to be used for a few seconds. So let's check it out. All right. Good. We are tracking. looks to be accurately. All right. So I'm going to get rid of these. All right. So um, that's the GM. Let's get back to the ball. Accelerate towards, all right, it's, it's uh, doesn't X and Y uh, value, so X first, Y second. So X, I want you to accelerate towards X. Game. Accelerate towards mouse Y. And I'm actually kind of want to maybe, well, let's just keep it this way for now. Uh, let's say 400. We will put this in here. Let's give it a different color. Because why not? There we go. Yeah. Alright, so it's just doing it. Kind of by default, just following my dude around. Okay. Um, one thing I do want to turn off is... Well, actually, I'll get to that later. Let's let's keep it simple for now. Alright, so now it's just doing it. It's doing it all the time. It's not doing it like when I push a button or something like that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up a rule. And rules are the meat and potatoes of, uh, or the, they're the backbone. They're, they're the bread and butter, I guess I should say, of, uh, of game style. Rules, you're going to use those for like everything. It's basically your if statement, if you've ever done any programming. Um, so, and you can rename them and everything like that. So, like, say, um, launch ball. And we'll end up putting a lot more behavior in here later, but, uh, what do you say? Key is pressed. And what key? Let's say a space bar for now. Um, all right, so launch ball, slowly towards. Now, this isn't going to work very well, but... All right, and then change behavior. All right. Um, okay, so that speed is really, really not what I want it to be. It's going to get crazy. I know there's probably an easier way to do this, but this is the way I'm going to do it. Or, you know, a better way to do this, but this is the way I'm going to do it. So I'm actually going to say four. Let's say it's going to accelerate for about, you know, 0.2 seconds. And we're going to bump this up to like 4,000. Uh, but we also want to give it some gravity. So let's give it gravity. Uh, accelerate downward. Two seventy Acceleration. Of, let's see. Yeah, 100 is probably fine. We'll change that later. Um, actually, no, you know what? I don't want to do that. I don't want to put this in a rule. Put this up here. Get rid of this rule. Um, timer. Yeah, so I want it to be accelerating down. 
all the time. Oh, it's max speed. That's right. Here in the uh, in the actor attributes, and here's the instance again. I don't want to do it in the instance. I want to do it in the thing. So there are physics. I don't want there to be any friction. Uh, friction is basically if it's rolling, if it's uh, being launched, um, it will slow down uh, as it goes. So it's like almost as if you're looking at it top down, and uh, and it has you know it's in sand or something. Like you could say uh, you know it, it give it like really high friction, it would slow down really fast. So like sort of like a ball rolling through sand. So uh, we want it to be movable. We actually do want it to be a circle, um, not custom. Oops, not custom. I can show you guys that later. I don't really. Maybe I'll show it to you later. I don't know. Custom collision is. It's doable. It's really not that complicated, but it is it's the best way to do it. It's finicky. Um, it can it can be kind of a pain. So, all right. So um, it's not under physics, but I did need to change that stuff. So good. Oops, I accidentally stopped my recording. Um, okay. So motion, max speed zero. Well, I think that. So it doesn't have a max speed. That may be new. Like, I, I think it used to. I used to have, it like, a default max speed, but maybe it doesn't anymore. Okay, so, actually, I don't want this in my scene. So, I've got I've got the ball. I want to actually put up, like, a launcher or a spawner or a cannon. I guess I can just call it a cannon because that's what's going to end up being. Cannon. And you, I'll put you in here. Say when the key is pressed. So, we'll space for now. Do. We're going to spawn. Actor. Oh, and uh, if you're trying to put together your own game, you want to know what all of these behaviors do. If you come over to this tab that looks like a Tetris thing, uh, it's level behaviors. Um, you can click on them, and I just closed it. There we go. It'll give you a little, a little thing. And actually, it, it, tables were not a thing the last time I used uh, Game Salad. Um, I'm really happy to see they put those in, um, but I don't want to teach anything on them just because I don't, I, I don't know them well enough. I don't want to, you know, I'm already probably giving all levels of misinformation and people who know game salad and programming and all that stuff are probably screaming at the screen for all half the stuff I do, but, uh, I don't, I don't, <laughs> that is the section I, I feel like I need to do some homework before I tell anybody how to do it. So anyway, we're going to go ahead and uh, keep on rolling. We got the cannon, um, spawn ball, spawn ball, and you can always add a notes and stuff like that. If I can remember how to add notes, text, Shoot, I don't remember how to add notes. Oh, well, that not worry about it right now. If I label everything, okay, it should be all right. All right, so spawn actor. We're gonna say spawn the ball. All right, so actually, kind of wanted to spawn behind the actor. Uh, basically, what that means is like, say, if uh, if I told it to spawn from its in, like the middle of itself, it would show up on top of it in the middle and then and then come out. So it'd be kind of look kind of awkward. Actually, I could show you that real quick. Hang on. Do -do -do -do, oopsie doodle, drag the cannon in. Um, yeah, let's just say in front of actor, that's the default. And if I do that, it'll. Yeah. Well, it's not really that good. So hang on, let's give the ball a different color <laughs> so it looks a little better. Make it smaller too. Uh, da -da -da -da. Size, size, there it is. And we'll just say 32 for now. 32. There we go. Alright. Let's get a Q bluish. Alright. Yeah, see, it kind of spawns in the middle of it and it's like super obvious. Alright. Uh, let's go back to that. We will say behind actor. Ugh, this is going to be a pain. I have to do this whole time. Yeah, see, now it kind of comes out from behind it. Alright. Okay, so let's go ahead and get back to our cannon. Um, I feel like that's all it needs to do for right now. No, actually, I want to see it rotate, because if it's going to be a cannon, it's got to, like, face uh, the mouse. Um, okay, so let's say rotate to ang we rotate to position. Uh, let me see, I don't, hmm, stops at destination, 
Just run to completion. This is different. I haven't. It didn't look like this last time I used it. We're gonna try it. We're gonna try it. Uh, let's say you're gonna rotate to. Oh come on! Now we could use our global attribute, uh, the mouse X, mouse Y, just because it's gonna be the exact same thing as the device. Like, but either way, it's, if something ever happens to that 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 uh, that scripting. Uh, where I start tracking it incorrectly for whatever reason, I don't know why I do that, but it will it will still just track to the mouse position X and mouse position Y. There we go. All right, let's see if that works. God bless it. I can see it rotating. All right, that looks pretty good. Not bad. Um. I don't like it's uh let's make sure it's width is down. I don't wanna um let's see mm. And here's another weird thing about game salad is sometimes if you make changes to things over here, uh like if you I've made a change to it something won't carry over. And it's, I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. But I clearly changed the size, right? Sixty four width over here, but this one is still 128, so we're going to go ahead and delete it, and I'll bet you when I drag it back in, it's the right size, yeah, so I don't, I don't really know, like, I probably should be teaching Game Maker, uh, but Game Maker, best way to put this, Game Maker is a lot more to, to buy, a lot more to bite off, you know, it's, 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 it's considerably more difficult to learn, um, it's, Far more powerful. Like, oh my god, Game Maker, you can do whatever you want with Game Maker. As long as you learn how to do, run the code and all that, you're good. You know, that's, you will be fine. Um, we're rotating the wrong angle. Um, 120. Um, And we're going to save this real quick. I just like to periodically save. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, let's go with tutorial project. Okay. Make sure that's right. All right. Yay, we got that going. A little the ball's not coming back down. <laughs> yeah, let's let's put some barriers in place so we can barrier. Uh, let's just say wall. Wall doesn't really need to do much of anything. Uh, but I will show you this, and something that you're probably gonna run into is uh, the ball needs to collide with. I'm gonna set up our collision. Collide with actor type wall. We'll end up adding a bunch of collision behaviors because it's got to collide with more than just the wall. But uh, you say you say you want that wall, you want it to bounce off of it, right? And you know, just bounce right back. The problem is whenever I hit it, boop, the wall kind of drifts off. So no. Um, so what I'm gonna have to do is come to the actor properties. I'm gonna go to I believe it's motion. I always get so confused with whether something should belong to motion or physics. Um, physics. Movable. Unchecked. And boop. All right. So what I'll end up doing uh, is making it to where the walls aren't really visible. Uh, what you can do for that is graphics visible. Um, I'm going to leave it visible for now just because then I can... Then I can see it, you know, then I can, then I can, you know, move it around and morph it. So, like, if I, this, that's all the wall needs to do. Like, it, it needs to just be an actor. It needs to be there. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and stretch this bad boy out. Really wish I had more screen space to work with, but you guys wouldn't be able to see my backstage if I popped it out. That's the whole reason I'm keeping the GM visible, too, is because eventually I'm going to get rid of that. I'm going to, you know, it's going to be there, but I'm going to need to make sure it, uh, it's not visible. Okay. Oh, excuse me. 
I would just put it like that, wouldn't it? Yeah, 90. 90 degrees math. It is not my strong suit. All right. Cool. All right, let's save again. Save early, save often, because uh, and, and I would harp on Game Salad for being unstable, but like almost every game tool is unstable if you leave it open long enough and do enough stuff in it. So it's not a bad idea to close stuff and reopen it, close stuff and reopen it. So, all right. Um, hang on. I, I'm gonna pause for a second and blow my nose. My nose is getting all kind of crazy. Okay, I'm back. Um, all right. So let's see what we got so far. Should be able to boop, boop, boop. Boop, boop, boop. Your accelerate is not working. Oh, relative to scene. Oh, that's another thing I'm going to bring up. Uh, if it's relative to actor, like say if uh, the actor were rotating, you tell it to accelerate down and the actor were rotating, it would just kind of like loop around because it's constantly chasing its, uh, its bottom. Like it's saying, what's down for me and what's down for the scene are not the same thing. Uh, so if I make it seen, that might actually fix our issue. Kind of. Let's up it a little bit, the intensity. And see what we got here. Let's try to shoot it up. Boop. Yeah, there we go. All right, there we go. That's better. Um, actually kind of wanted a little more intense on that, but again, I'll, I'll, you know, we'll end up tweaking all of this stuff. This is basically just trying to get the prototype up and running. All right, so what's next, what's next, what's next? We got that, oh, we need to delete the balls whenever they hit the bottom. So I'm gonna make a special barrier and that'll end up doing a lot of our work for us. Barrier. Bottom barrier. Ooh, right in the bottom. I'm um, sorry, that was cheesy. Uh, anyway, so bottom barrier, uh, let's say put this behavior on the ball. Um, delete, oh wait, rule, collision, if I collide with the bottom barrier, um, destroy myself, alright, that'll be good, um, landing at bottom, there we go. And the re I, I would usually say just destroy self is like the label, but I'm, I'm going to end up putting a lot more behavior in here. Like we're going to have a ton of behavior in here. In fact, no, we'll, we'll, we'll get that one. If we come across that problem, we'll get there. I, sorry. So I think. All right. So uh, now what we need to do is create a, a peg you know, or something for it to hit. So let's say peg and you will be Roughly about the same size of the ball, I imagine. What size do I have that as right now? 32 and 32. Size. 32. 32. I want you to be circular in your shape. And let's make you a different color. Boop. Okay. All right. Let's do that. Bring you in here. We're going to bring a couple of these guys in here. And I apologize if I start channeling Bob Ross at any given moment because I watch a lot of Bob Ross just to relax, sort of like a ASMR kind of thing. He's he's a, he's a chill dude and yeah, he's a cool guy. I like him a lot. So anyway. All right. So let's say ball we need to set up another collision. Actually, you know, I'm, since there's going to be a bunch of different things it collides with, I'm actually going to go ahead and add a group. A uh, group is basically just kind of like a folder, uh, so you can organize stuff. So, collision rules. If I misspell anything, I apologize. I'm a terrible speller. Uh, let's see. Collide with. What are you colliding with right now? Walls? Yeah. Collide with walls. Um, collide. Let's see here. Let me collide with pegs. With pegs. Peg. All right. So you're going to bounce off pegs. All right. Now, um, that's, that's our collision for like, you know, saying, Hey, I bounce off of this thing. But what about like a collision of, Hey, I want to, you know, do something whenever these two things collide. So that's what we're looking for is collision. So we're going to go ahead and, and actually here's where I usually just open up a rule and then, 
put colli collision in there, and you know, and that's that's fine. But uh, game salad actually kind of makes it easier, where you can actually put collision. Actually, just drag it over here, and it'll automatically make the rule. So rule collision. Um, we're gonna say increment score, raise score. All right, sweet. So we need to make that a variable. Um, basically, if this is your first time trying to make a game of any kind, and you're just kind of learning the basics, variables are basically everything, everything. Like you, you want to put on make, make almost everything a variable. If you're trying to do anything in a game and you can't figure out how, I guarantee it's usually make a variable. Uh, it's some variation of that. <laughs> um, but uh. Variables are super, super powerful. We will be using them a lot. We've only used two so far, but we will end up with probably dozens, if not a hundred, hundreds of them. Um, and uh, I imagine the tables would probably be really, really useful for this, uh, just because you know they, they allow you. Because if I if I just make everything an attribute, this list is going to get crazy long. Like right now, it's already got these player key maps, which weren't there the last time I played. Uh, add reward. I haven't. I don't know what that is. That seems like something I'm not gonna want to have anything to do with. Um, who knows? Maybe we'll add ads. I don't know. I've never, I've never uh, done uh, an app with ads. That that could be interesting. But um, yeah, but uh, I imagine table probably lets you keep things nice and neat. Uh, probably make it the same way. You make everything else. Yeah, you just push the plus and minus. Um, yeah, so, uh, but for now, since this game is going to be super simple, uh, I'm going to go ahead and stick to the game variables. So, let's go ahead and keep doing that. Okay. Alright, so, score, let's say, it's going to be an integer. Score. Right. Oh, and these uh, variables, uh, boolean is a boolean, I say boolean, um, it's true or false. It is basically just a switch, on or off. Um, text is what it sounds like. Text is a string. It's going to say, uh, you know, words, blah, blah, blah. Integer is everything, like a whole number. So it'll be like one through whatever. Um, real can be what a lot of people call float. Um, it can, it's, uh, usually between uh, zero and one. Uh, so it's like a decimal. And then a lot of people use it for percentages. You'll use it, using it for that. Uh, angle. I haven't worked with angle or index very much. Uh, if somebody knows what they are. Yeah, uh, let me know. Um, I'm just, like I said, I'm still learning all this stuff. I'm not. I'm the world. I'm the world worst program, and it's, it's okay. I don't. I don't mind. Uh, um, let's see. But I get by somehow. So every now and then. All right. Debug text. I actually want to put make you say the score. Just so I know it's actually going up. And I already know a couple of issues that are going to happen. And that's okay. That's okay. So let's go ahead and boop, boop, boop. Oh, they're not supposed to be movable. And also it didn't work. Oh, I didn't actually tell it to do anything with it yet, did I? <laughs> All right, so here we're going to use change attribute. That's a that's a really common, common thing you're going to want to do is change attribute. Attributes, game, score. Now, here's where a lot of people make a mistake where they say, hey, I want it to be plus, plus 10. So plus 10, they'll put there. Um, the problem with that is, is it's always going to change it to plus 10. It's not going to add 10. It's just going to change it to plus 10. So if I hit four of these, my answer is always going to be 10. It's just going to be 10 over and over and over again, because it's not actually adding to it. Uh, so what we're going to do, and it has to know what to add it to. So like you could use this to add, you know, to a completely different variable. You know, it doesn't have to be this. So like, all right, so I'm going to change game score, but what am I changing it to? Uh, you're going to want to change it to yourself. You know, you want to say game score. Where are you at? Da -da -da -da. Score. Then plus 10. So I want you to take, take, you know, find out what your current score is and then add 10 to it. And that's what it's going to do. Um, all right. So there's that. Uh, we need to change the physics of these things. Be movable, not movable. All right, let's check it out. Hopefully that number goes up. It did not. What is happening? That's a lot of bounce. <sighs> let's find out what we did wrong. Oh yeah, I helped if I actually use the peg thing. Yay! All right, this should work. Assuming I'm able to hit it. There we go. Yay! That is way too bouncy. All right, so. I don't like how bouncy that is. And a lot of times, uh, one of the things I like to do is, uh, 
Sorry, still having some uh, technical difficulty with my recorder for some reason. All right, so um, one of the things I like to do is sort of keep a little list, of, like a little to-do list of like, because you'll quickly get overwhelmed and forget about things. Um, like, so as you're working, you'll be like, oh, I, I need to fix that or I need to set this up. So I'll set like a little text document or something like that. I'll be like, oh, I need to address all of these problems. So I'm actually going to do that now. Um, let's see, bounciness. Um... That's it for now. <laughs> and I'm going to work on that right now. But yeah, anyway, it's, it's a good practice. I, I'd recommend, I'd recommend you do it. So, all right. So I don't like how bouncy it is. So when they hit it, it's, it's nuts. Like it's, it's going all crazy. Uh, da, 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 da. Gravity. I don't like how much gravity you have. We're going to bump you up to a oopsie doodle. A thousand. There we go. All right. All right. Okay, so um, the bounciness is a bit too much. So I'm going to go down to our physics. And I actually not a super... I'm not like... I, I'm not super expert, expert on the physics of this game, or this system, and I sh really should learn more, especially if I'm making a tutorial video. Duh. Um, but uh, I think density is sort of like the weight of it. Uh, so like how much it affects other things when it hits them. Um, I think... I think that's that's what that does. But bounciness is basically uh, how much it bounces off of things. So I'm really not happy with the current bounciness. So let's go one point or zero point two, and uh, save. And let's go ahead and try it. Um, still really fast. Ooh, that's a lot of bounciness. Oh, also, yeah, the bounciness of the peg itself because that affects. Uh, Affects the bounciness of the ball as well. So bounciness, 0.2. Now let's give it a try. And again, I'm sure there's a better way to do all that. Boop. Ooh, this bounce a little harder than that. Uh, 0.5. Boop, 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 boop. I'm okay with that. We might bump it up a little bit later. Um, but for right now, that's that's pretty pretty nice. Okay, so. Let's go ahead and keep on rolling. Um, all right, so we got a score. What do we want to do? What do we want to do? We probably want to make it to where the game can end. Oh yeah, number of balls. That's we need something like that. So I'm gonna call it ball pit, and then proceed to urinate in it like all the little kids at Chuck E. Cheese. No, um, ball pit. That does not need to be an actor. It needs to be a variable. So, integer balls remaining. Remaining. Okay. All right, so we're actually going to say, let's go with five for now. There we go. And, yeah, let's change you to balls remaining. I want to make sure that we do this right. Balls remaining. Make sure you say what you're supposed to say. Five. Great. Okay. Oop, I should exit out of Steam so I don't give away anybody's names. There we go. Okay, so uh let's go and close this too, actually. There we go. Okay, cool. Um, all right, let's go ahead and what were we doing? Oh, yeah, the balls. All right, so whenever the ball hits the bottom, I want you to, before you destroy yourself, and this is the tricky part is I think, I, I vaguely remember having to put the destroy uh, behavior like in a timer of like, you know, a quarter of a second and then have it take place after all the other stuff I want to have happen uh, to make sure that like it doesn't destroy itself before it does all the things I want it to do um, but we'll, we'll test it out real quick and uh, one thing I like to do is let's see let's see let's see let's see no 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 sorry I, I have have sound effects that I use because I like to use sound effects for for debugging. Like 
if I hear the noise, I'm like, oh, that obviously triggered. That happened, you know, like, and then somewhere along the line. So hopefully, art, placeholder, no. Yeah, I don't know where they are. Um, I'm gonna pause for a second, and then I'll go get a uh, just a basic old sound effect, and then uh, yeah, and then then I'll be back. Okay, all right. Um, as you can see on the screen, it uses OGG files or OGG files. I'm not quite sure how you should say it, but anyway. All right, so um, when you land, actually, I want you to play sound effect. I just want to make sure that you actually collided with uh with the bottom barrier like I want you to. Right. So bleach in. Um what were we doing? Oh yeah. Change attribute. Attribute game bolts remaining. And just like before, we can't just say minus one. Um it won't work. It will just try to change the attribute to minus one instead of subtracting one. So Attribute game, balls remain, minus, oops, minus one. All right, let's save. You say five. Let's go ahead and poop, poop, poop. Hmm, didn't work. Probably because my destroy actor is so high up. I think it goes, I'm not sure, but I think it goes in order. Like it'll run down the list of behaviors and do that in that order. Oh, I bet you I didn't put a bottom barrier in. That's why. <laughs> yeah, that'd do it. That would do it. What the heck is wrong with you, Dan? Dan! We don't want to leave any gaps in our walls. That could cause some buggages. Probably faster for me to just click and drag it, but that's okay. Okie dokie. Now let's try it. Boom shakalaka. Why does why is it flashing like that though? I don't know why it's doing that. That's weird. We're gonna save, close, and reopen game salad. Because I found a lot of issues tend to get resolved. When you do that, so open recent. Did I not name it? Oh, I don't think I named it. Yeah, I named the folder, but I didn't name the actual project. Shite. All right. Oh well. We'll rename it later. All right. Let's see if it does it now. Yeah, it still flashes. That's weird. I don't know why it's doing that. Let's we'll figure that out. Here, I'm gonna put that on my list. Figure out screen flash when ball lands. All right. Um, okay, so what are we going to do? So we've got, you know, uh, sure, we've got a ball count, but what does that mean? Um, we're going to go to our scene GM. It handles all of our heavy lifting. Um, track mouse X. Track mouse Y, and I do like to use Game Salad to teach people how to make games, just because it's it's a much easier to jump into. Um, not having an actual script, is, is, or, you know, code is really really great. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, I just very simple, very fun. Okay, so here's our if statement, which is called a rule. We're gonna say, hey, if this attribute, if Attribute game ball is remaining equals zero. And game over. We're going to um what should we do? I guess just reset the game. Show I don't know what show banner is, I'll have to look that up. Show more games, I don't know what that is. 
um, play reset game. Let's just a reset game. There we go. No ad. Let's. I don't know. And I don't even know that word. Interstitial. Yeah, whatever. Uh, reset. Game. There you go. Let's shoot. I'm not sure why it's rotating every time I push the button. Okay, so... Hmm. I was getting ready to say something, I don't know where it was. You have to apologize. I was up really, really late last night watching the presidential election results, so... Oh, one thing I didn't want to notice or show is uh, let's just actually disable this uh, GM real quick. That I don't want to do any of that right now. Um, but one problem you'll notice is if I just like, damn it, it just shoots a ton, and I don't want that. I want I'm going to disable that sound too. Oh God, <laughs> bottom barrier was that the bottom? No, it was the ball. Uh, where is it? Close you. I don't like how it expands all the behaviors. Waiting a bottom. Here we go. We're going to go ahead and turn you off. Thank you. All right. So, so you'll notice I can just keep doing that. And that's not, not what I want. I only want to be able to push out one at a time. Um, maybe as like a mode or something. Why is it flashing? It's so weird. Uh, maybe as a mode or something, um, we could have it be able to do rapid fire. But for, for this particular chapter of this game i don't i don't want that so how are we going to do that basically if you said make a variable you're right because that's what you do 99.9 .9 percent of the time when you want to do something uh that isn't like super duper straightforward all right so we're going to go and make another variable um let's go bull we're going to call it ball active off what you're gonna do is and I want it to pretty much the moment the ball is spawned I want it to change the attribute to true so change attribute game ball active to true um, let's see here ball active Okay. Now, it's if this isn't going to do anything, I'm still going to be able to launch. Now, what I want to do is I want to put in my cannon a check. Say, hey, if if this thing happens, it, you know, it has to be, ball active has to be false in order for me to launch. So, let's say ball oh, attribute if game ball active is false do these things okay so one real quick thing is you'll notice this rule at the top we can either have win any or all um, all means it, all of these things have to be true in order for it to execute what's in the do section um, if I change it to any either of these things could be true and it will execute what's in the do section so if I put had it set to any I could push space it doesn't matter what ball active is um, or if ball active is false at all it will just launch um, so yeah let's let's not do that Alright, so I can already tell what a problem is going to be. We haven't finished setting it up, but we just want to test this out first. I can only do one. Sweet. Let's see what the problem is. <laughs> it doesn't turn it back on. Uh, so what we're going to do is ball. Whenever you land at the bottom, I want you, first things first, to um, change attribute game. Ball active to false. Ball not active flag. You need to go up into here, my friend. There we go. Sweet. Let's go ahead and do that. And it's working beautifully. 
and boom, I can launch again. All right, let's keep on trucking. So we've got, um, it's a little early in the game to worry about this, but it's sort of a pet peeve of mine. I don't like uh, lack of screen transitions, like when scenes just pop from one to the other. Uh, it's kind of, there's a big pet peeve of mine. I feel like that's sort of like the number one on the, you know, production value checklist is like you need screen transitions. Um, so, and it's such a minor thing, uh, but I'm going to do it now. So, because it's because it bugged me that much. Screen transition. And you know what? The, I was reading on the forums that might actually be something that's built in now. I don't know. It doesn't look like it. Here. Fade. Screen. Oh, maybe it's not. I don't know. All right, we're gonna we're gonna make our own. Um, it's gonna be the actor is gonna be black. Yes, we can make it white. And that's fine. We're gonna give it a massive size so it covers the whole screen, no matter what. I don't care. If it's way, 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 way too big. I don't really care. It's just one thing. Okay. Screen transition. And we won't leave this here, um, but all right. So there's just screen transition. This is just for testing. I'm going to take it out from when we're actually. All right. So screen transition. I want you. Actually, let's change you to screen fade in. All right. So you're going to change attribute. Now you think, well, why is change attribute a fade in? The reason for that being is because. You can change your own attributes as an actor. So as an actor, uh, it can change things about itself. And for this particular thing, I'm going to... Because usually I go to attributes game. That's where we keep little things. But I'm actually looking at itself at this point. And I'm going to go to color. And then color is a property called alpha. And I want to change it to zero. Now, the problem with that is whenever I launch it, boop, it just does it immediately. It doesn't change. So that's why we like to use interpolate. Interpolate basically is changing from one value to another um, in, in, in over a set period of time. So, like, this is one second. I think one second is a little long for a fade in, but, you know, whatever. Uh, so, it's like, all right, well, what do you want to change? Uh, you want to, ch I want to change my screen fade in time color alpha to zero. Let's see if that works. There we go. Hey, perfect. Why not? Um, and, and I like fading things in and out. I, I, it just, it feels... It makes it look and feel so much better. Um, screen fade out. And we're basically just going to do the inverse of this. We're going to make sure that it's actually not. Uh, it's, it's color alpha is set to zero by default. There we go. And we are going to interpolate attribute self color alpha to 1 over 0.5 seconds. And as you can probably see over here on the left hand side of the actors tab, things can get really cluttered really fast. I mean, we've been doing this for what, 45 minutes and we've already got a slew of actors. Um, so you can always change it to the, you know, the icon list, uh, which is the way it used to be a long time ago and they, I don't think they even had a list view. Um, or what you can do is you can set up tags um, tags are really helpful, not just for organization, but also for, um, also for like, uh, function wise. Uh, so like say the ball, like I'm sure I'm going to end up having more than one type of, uh, of a peg. Um, and instead of it's just saying peg, you know, like I call, I have to set up a, a different rule for each kind of peg. I can just say collide with pegs after tag. New tag. It's a bunch of, I want to see if this changes dynamically. Pegs. No, I didn't. All right. Pegs. Um, and then everything that I drag down into this pegs tag, it will collide with. Like, so it will collide with all of them. So I can make a thousand pegs in this peg tag and only have to have that one behavior on my ball, uh, which is pretty handy. But uh, yeah. Uh, the only, only thing I don't really like about it is, like, say, if I have a new tag here and I want to say, you know, power ups. You know, and I want to add something to that. 
It doesn't doesn't add it to that. It just adds it to the all section, and then I have to grab it, drag it down to the power ups, and then recollapse my all. And boom, there it is. Um, so yeah, you know what? Let's do a power up. Let's let's teach that real quick. Uh, this is probably the last thing I do uh, for the, for this particular video. Uh, let's get rid of freight in right now. All right, so uh, power up. What do we want this to do? We want to increase the ball's launch speed. How about that? Like, we'll, we'll up its launch speed. So, uh, shot speed power up. Okay. You don't really need to do much yourself other than when you collide with the ball, you play a sound and get wrecked. All right, so rule. Um, collide with the ball. Um... Yeah, you know what? Let's. And it can get really confusing uh, knowing which behavior is on which object, but especially if you have two objects that like do something when they interact, uh, it's sometimes difficult to know. Well, did I put that behavior on the power up, or did I put that behavior on the ball? Um, I'm sure there's a best practice for always trying to keep it on one or or not. I don't really know the best practice. Like I, I'm a self-taught uh, developer. I mean, yeah, I do have a bachelor's degree in game design, but like. They didn't teach me a whole lot <laughs> about best practices. Um, so, yeah, let's let's go ahead and... Uh, I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and put this behavior on the power-up itself. Uh, destroy this actor, but I don't want... Actually, I don't want to do that. I want to put that in last. Um, all right, so let's play that sound. I just want to make sure that we have the correct thing. All right. Um, let's... And actually, we need to make another variable. Uh, if we want to have a power-up for, for speed, we need to make a variable. So we're going to make another variable. It's going to be int. Let's go ahead and say ball shot speed. And what's our default? Let's go and look at the ball. Of what its default speed is. Um, collision rolls. I don't need that. Um, oh, I see the timer. Shot speed. All right, so we have it set for 4,000. So let's go and go over here and put 4,000. Oops. 4,000, and what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to change this, but we have the acceleration set right there, but we actually want to change it to be dynamic. Um, so we're going to go ahead and constrain it to uh, that, not constrain, but we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure it uses that metric, that attribute, uh, to actually be able to, to, to for, its, for its thing. So right now it will be exactly the same, it's 4,000. So let's go ahead and go over into, where's our power up? All right, speed screenshot. Or uh, shot speed power up, whatever. Um, and we'll change attribute. And we're going to make it pretty big just so it's noticeable. Uh, we won't have it be this big all the time. Um, attribute game ball shot speed to game ball shot speed plus, let's just say 4,000. It's going to be, t we're not keeping it that way. It's just to make sure that it's nice and noticeable. And then destroy. All right. Speed shot power up. Uh, it's just the instance. Let's go ahead and change your color just so I know what you are. There we go. Nice ugly yellowish green. Okay. Um. And where's the dis do we have debug text? Yeah, there it is. Debug text. Let's go ahead and make sure you display shot speed. All right, so hey, we're at 4,000. Let's go ahead and 8,000. And let's make sure it's just back. Boom, that's a lot faster. All right, cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, that's that. I think that's going to do it for today. Um, I will probably pick this up tomorrow. And we're not just going to... This is just the, obviously the early prototyping. Uh, we're going to get more and more and more into it. And uh, hopefully... I mean, hopefully... We'll finish it through to the end. Like, I have a, a real bad problem with starting projects, being really passionate about them, and not finishing them. Um, ADD at its worst, I guess. But, yeah, hopefully hopefully we'll, we'll be able to pull it out and, and get this thing done. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. I uh, appreciate it, and uh, see you next time.